folks, welcome back. I'm Heather and this is Recently Seen Reading and I thought I would film a quick little video to assemble a TBR for Victober. My challenge is that I have a pretty jam-packed October already and I need to find a way to participate and meet some of the challenges um, without ballooning my um, workload for the month. So I think I've figured out a way of um, using three books to cover off Four of the challenges. I'm going to skip the read by candlelight challenge. It just reminds me of hurricanes and we're still in hurricane season here so I think I'll just pass on that one. So I've left links to Ange, Kate, Katie and Lucy's channels below where all the um, challenges are described. Um, so I think for Ange and Katie's challenges I have one book that will meet um, the spirit of the challenges, I think. So Angela's challenge is to read a book by a Victorian woman and Katie's is to read a Victorian book that's either short or long. So I'm um, either under 250 pages or over 500 pages. So I'm going to pass on the over 500 pages and I'm going to read something by Mary Seacole called The Wonderful Adventures of Mary Seacole, which was published in 1857. So Mary Seacole was a contemporary of Florence Nightingale. Seacole was a Jamaican woman who moved back and forth across the Atlantic and worked as a nurse in the Crimea and was as famous and, as, and prominent as Florence Guy Nightingale was in her time. But Seacole was largely forgotten for all the usual historical reasons. So I thought I'd give that one a go. It seems kind of interesting to me. Um, and then for the reread a Victorian book by which is Kate's Challenge. I've decided to read one of my favorite Victorian novels which is Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. I'm a rather shorty um, but I'm really looking forward to a reread. I haven't reread it in about four or five years. Cranford was published between 1851 and 1853 so first serially and then as a novel um, bound together. Um, and that leads me to the fourth challenge, which is to Lucy's challenge, which is to reread or to, to read an underrated Victorian book um, from the same years as your favorite book. So for this one, I'm going to choose something that's um, little read these these days, and a lot of good reasons, I think. I'm going to read um, Catherine Parr Trail's novel for children, um, Canadian Crusoe's which was published in 1852. So um, Partrail was one of the four Strickland sisters and she and her sister Susanna Moody emigrated to Canada while the, the other two Strickland sisters stayed behind in England. Um, and Canadian Crusoe's interests me because it's both a, a children's novel, um, it deals with this notion of Crusoe um, and Robinson Crusoe and Swiss Family Robinson are some of my favorite um, novels, um, 18th century and 19th century novels. Um, Swiss Family Robinson is something I reread and reread as a child, and so was Robinson Crusoe. Why in the world I was reading Robinson Crusoe before I was 12, I don't know, but I reread both of them multiple times before I was 12 or 13. So I thought I'd have a look at um, Canadian Crusoe's which I'm expecting to be um, an okay read, but I'm also expecting it'll have lots of problematic content because it's written by a Victorian woman who brought with her um, English Victorian attitudes towards um, Canadian and Indigenous populations. So that's going to be my Victoria list. Um, Mary Seacole's Wonderful Adventures, Elizabeth Gaskell's Cranford, and Catherine Parr Trail's Canadian Crusoe's. So that's three additional books onto my TBR, but that should be manageable. I hope you're having a great week, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.